Hey guys, uh, <clears throat> thanks for bearing with me today. Um, a little under the weather and I don't know why my link was giving you guys problems, but hopefully um, this video can help you guys get started on the social studies section, okay? So last week we talked about um, early Native American groups in Arizona. Uh, we discussed the mound builders. Um, we briefly talked about the Hohokams and we briefly talked about the Anas Azi. Um, I should be able to pull up a video on the Anas Azi. Just give me one second. Bingo. Okay. So, all right. So, um, this is a brief video discussing the uh, Mogulan, Anasazi, and Hohokam. Um, tomorrow when we have class, just in case all of you guys don't see this, um, I will show it again, okay? Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen for the YouTube. Share. Let me make sure you can hear the sounds coming from my computer. Bong. All right, guys. People have occupied the Americas for perhaps as long as 40,000 years. Over these years, they have created great civilizations. The Anasazi, Hohokam, and Mogion are much more than they appear. to three historians about the Anasazi, Hohokam, and Mogollon. So today, let's first just get straight into it, and let's talk to Doug about the Anasazi. Well, the Anasazi tribe lived from 100 AD to 1300 AD. So they built their houses out of stone, and those were pueblos, and they also built kivas. These were underground, and they were used for ceremonies. The Anasazi got food and other goods because they were farmers who, farmed, who harvested corn and squash, hunter-gatherers who hunted rabbit, deer, and prairie dogs, and basket makers. They did not trade as much as any of the other tribes, but they did sell pottery made from stone and rock. Thank you, Doug. Uh, that was very good. Um, so I'm going to continue with Alan. And uh, so tell us about the Hohokams. Uh, <laughs> the Hohokam lived from 180 to 1450 AD. The Hohokam habitat was a snoring desert by rivers, and it was made out of homes of jackal, which is a small hut, and, build, and villagers built around the plaza. The Hohokans uh, got food from farming corn, beans, cotton, and squash, also other food, and the hunters gathered rabbits, prairie dog, and deer. The Hohokam artifacts was sort of like the Anasazi, made pottery on, on red buff, shell, ornaments, and stone tools. Oh wow, okay, I did not know that. So let's continue with Ben, and Ben tell us about the Anasazi. No, Mogion, sorry, thank you. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> well, the Mogion lived from 180 to 1450 AD. The Mogion were mountain and desert dwellers who lived in the Gila River country by the Mombres River and the San Francisco River. 
They hunted and were gatherers. They farmed corn, beans, squash, and cotton. They traded pottery and weapons made from stone and bones. Artifacts included spear points and stone knives. They also made shell pendants and bone hairpins for both men and women. Okay, I would like to say thank you to our all of our historians that helped us know about the lifestyle of the Mogion Hohokam and Anasazi. So today I'm going to have you jump over to my friend in a secret location that is going to tell you about the adaptations and alterations of the three tribes. So, take it over to you. Well, I'm not only going to tell you today about how everything was adapted, but I also am going to tell you about how it ended and all the tribes ended. So, let's start with the Anasazi. Well, it is thought that the Anasazi ended because of drought invading enemies or internal conflict. You can still see their ruins at Mesa Verde, Canyon de Che, and Cayenta. Yes. So it is also thought that the Hohoka moved from the desert in summer over foothills and then back to the desert in winter. They built over 300 miles of canals to irrigate their crops. It is also thought that they may have left because of drought, floods, and climate change. You can still see the ruins in Casa Grande and Sneak Town. The Mogion really relied on their environment. They followed the seasons. They must have left the area due to climate change or drought, which would lead to food shortages. And today, you can still see their ruins in many places, including the Gila Cliff Dwelling, Kanishba, Pueblo, and Grasshopper. So, back to you, Casey. Okay, thank you for telling us all about that, and thank you to all of our guests, and thank you for all of you guys out there watching. So, this week, we talked about the Anasazi, Hohokam, and the Mogion. But next week and the few weeks after that we will be talking about the Renaissance. So I hope you stay tuned for that. But until then, my name is Casey Likes signing off. Alright guys, um we're gonna get this one one sec. Oh here we go. Oh, not that. Hi, right, guys. <clears throat> okay, so the first native groups. Um, the Mogollons are believed to be the first Southwest Indians to build homes, cultivate crops, and make pottery. They settled near mountain streams or along mountain ridges that were easy to defend. They built homes that would protect them from the extreme heat of the day and the coolness of the night. They dug three or four feet down into the ground for the floor. Then they used logs for frames and saplings covered with reeds and muds for roofs. The ground provided natural insulation from both heat and cold. These dwellings are called pit houses. Larger structures built the same way were called kivas and used for social and ceremonial centers. The Mogollons did some hunting and gathering but gradually turned to farming. Using simple digging stick as their only tool, they planted corn, beans, squash, tobacco, and cotton. To make their pottery, they rolled clay into thin strips and then coiled it in the shape of in the shape of a pot. Next, they smoothed it and baked it in an oven. It wasn't until much later, influenced by the Anasazi, that they began to paint their pots. The Mogollons also wove cotton, feathers, and animal fur into beautiful clothing baskets. Okay. Uh, 
the Hohokam. At the same time, the Mogulans were developing their culture in the mountains. The Hohokam were developing theirs in the desert. The area had less wild game and edible plants. So it wasn't long before they turned almost entirely to agriculture for food. They could raise crops in the sandy soil because they built wide shallow canals controlled by the dams of woven mats to redistribute the water. With this system, they could grow enough corn, squash, beans, tobacco, and cotton to support a large population. Their principal city was Snake Town, located near present-day Phoenix, Arizona. There were about 100 homes covering some 300 acres. These pit homes were similar to Mogollon, but larger and more shallow. Archaeologists excavating that area have discovered that they coiled pottery, wove coal for pieces of clothing, and kept macaws as house pets. Macaws! I love that word. The whole come with traders, they got copper balls, mirrors made from iron pyrite, summer balls, and macaws from their Mexican neighbors. The Hohokam are also believed to be the first people in the world to do etchings. <clears throat> Sorry. They covered shells with pitch, carved designs in the pitch, then soaked them in an acid liquid made from cactus fruit. They removed the coating and the design remained. Today's Pima and Papaco tribes are taught to be their descendants. Honest Ozzy located at Mesa Verde in the Four Corners were originally called the Basket Makers. They learned how to use straw vines, rushes, and yucca to weave sandals, food containers, and other items. Later, they learned how to make pottery. The Honest Ozzy were hunters and gatherers, but over the years, they also became skilled farmers. They adopted the pit house style of the Mogollon and Hohokam, but gradually the pit homes were changed into completely underground ceremonial social norms now called kivas. As towns grew, multi-story homes were built one on top of the other. Ladders led from one level to the next at Mesa Verde. Many of the people left the Mesa top homes and moved into dwellings built into the ledges of canyon walls below. There, they were safe from attack and weather, but they had to climb up the steep ledges to work in their fields. These people have come to be known as cliff dwellers. The Honest Ozzy traded with southern neighbors for yarn and cloth to make blankets and clothing. Their pitch-covered waterproof baskets were replaced when they learned to fire pottery. The Honest Ozzy's descendants are a group known as the Pueblo. Two tribes of the Pueblo are the Hopi and the Zuni. Okay. Um, we will work on that tomorrow. Um, I want to get I want to get into the Cornell notes. Okay, so let me pull that up. All right, guys, only 11 questions, um, not too much. Um, I want to do at least, let's do at least three questions together. I mean, I'll do three questions now and then um, tomorrow we can do the rest, okay? Uh, hunter gatherer. I'm gonna, we're gonna work on that definition tomorrow as a class. Um, so let's work on number one. I hate when it does that. Okay, who were the first Southwest Indians to build homes. Hmm. I wonder what the answer to that question is. Could it be the first group we talked about? I'm gonna wait like two minutes. Um, I'm gonna wait like two minutes to give you guys a chance to answer on your own. 
and then I will type in the answer. Okay, so two minutes, 120 seconds starting now. It's 319. I'll tell you guys what it is at 321. Okay, let me pull up the reading. Okay. One more minute. All right, guys, it's 321. Okay, so uh, it says right here, guys, the Mogollons are believed to be the first Southwest Indians to build homes, cultivate crops, and make pottery, All right? So I'm gonna put this in a complete sentence. The Mogollons were the first Southwest Indians to build homes. Okay, the Mogollons were the first Southwest Indians to build homes. Question number two Why did the Mogollons settle along mountain ridges? I'm going to give you guys another two minutes to answer it on your own first. Okay, and then. Um, I will, I will reveal the answer. It is 322. Um, it just turned, well, it's been 322 for a little bit, so I'm going to give you guys until 325, okay? Starting now, let me pull up the reading. Why did they build their homes? Why did the Mogollon settle, sorry, why did the Mogollon settle along mountain ridges? Oh, snap. You guys got less than two more minutes left.
Okay, it's 225. Why did the Mogollons settle along mountain ridges? They settled near mountain streams or along mountain ridges that were easy to defend. Okay. The Mogollon settled along mountain ridges because they were easy to defend. All right, guys. Wait, what? You paused. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I don't know if you guys saw me typing the first question. Maybe you didn't, but number one, who were the first Southwest Indians to build homes? Uh, remember, I always answer in a complete sentence. The Mogollons were the first Southwest Indians to build homes. Number two, why did the Mogollons settle along mountain ridges? The answer is, remember, I always answer in a complete sentence. The Mogollons settled along mountain ridges because they were easy to defend. All right? I'm gonna do one more question with you guys and then we're gonna work on the rest tomorrow, okay? Um, describe some of the ways they built their homes. Describe some of the ways they built their homes. It's 326, I'm gonna give you two minutes. I'm gonna give you three minutes to answer on your own, so at 329, uh, I will reveal the answer, okay? Let me pull up the reading. Describe some of the ways they built their homes. Describe some of the ways they built their homes. <laughs> Describe some of the ways they built their homes. Oh. Stay right there. One more minute, guys. All right, so the question was, des describe some of the ways they built their, they built their homes, okay? It says right here in this paragraph, they built homes that would protect them from the extreme heat of the day and the coldness of the night, okay? That's explaining why they built their homes the way they did. They dug three or four feet down into the ground for the floor. Then they used logs for frames and saplings covered with reeds and moss for roofs. The ground provided natural insulation from both heat and cold. Okay, these dwellings are called pit houses. All right, I know that's a long answer, um, but you guys will be okay. Ah, sorry, I don't know the weather, so my voice sounds terrible. Um, describe some of the ways they built their homes. 
to it. Let's see. I'm gonna try to answer in a complete sentence, okay? The Mogulons Dog three. Dog three. Sorry. The Mogulons built their homes by digging. By digging three or four feet into the ground for the floor. Then they use logs for frames. And they use logs for frames. And saplings for roofs. I'm sorry, then they use logs for frames and saplings. Sorry, guys. Then they use logs for frames. I have to go back and forth. Then they used logs for frames and saplings. Then they, then they use logs for frames and saplings. And saplings covered with reeds. Saplings covered with reeds and mud. The ground provided natural insulation from both heat and the cold. The ground provided natural insulation from both, from both heat and cold. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to copy this down, okay? But the answer to number three, describe some of the ways they built their homes. Remember, always got to answer in the complete sentence. The Mogulons built their homes by digging three or four feet into the ground for the floor. Then they used logs for frames and saplings covered with reeds and mud for roofs. The ground provided natural insulation from both heat and cold, All right? Uh, I would give you guys about... 3.32, um, I'll give you till about 3.40 to copy this down, okay? So, um, eight minutes.
Two more minutes, guys. All right, guys, 3.38. Um, we'll work on the rest of the questions tomorrow, okay? Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, I'm excited to see you guys tomorrow. I'm be, I'll be posting this on Dojo shortly. I'm gonna post it on the class story and I'm going to send it as a message to all your parents, okay? All right, guys, have a good night.